may I now request Mr. Manish Daga, Managing Director, Cotton Guru, to present his case study. Uh, over to you, Mr. Daga. Hello. First of all, I have to use the opportunity uh, that uh, Asha Bhai has given to speak in language other than English. Uh, small Sanskrit slope to, to start this uh, short case study. I will try to keep it as short as possible. It is only pictures basically. Uh, a Sanskrit slope which says, Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, ma kashit dukh bhag bhavet, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Hi. If we need to be happy, we need to ensure the happiness of others. If we need respect, we need to ensure that we respect others. And if we need to succeed, we need to ensure that the success of the ecosystem around us is also ensured. And that is where uh, we come in in agriculture. Like uh, this special slide is what of Suresh Bhai was mentioning that there are a lot of new technology interventions happening in agriculture. And this presentation was made on 7th October 2023. World Cotton Day, only this slide, right? This shows the five point mantra that Cotton Guru has devised after speaking to so many scientists, being on so many panels across uh, so many countries, and also taking the inputs from India's best farmers who are taking highest yield in cotton. That collectively, what can be a simplistic five point mantra, which if the farmers implement, their yield will definitely go up. So these are the five-point mantras you can see, starting with satellite mapping, then comes canopy management, then advisory from the right group, anybody it may be, for um, weather, for um, agronomy, north to south sowing. World over, cotton has been sowed north to south, where they have achieved the highest yields. In India, it is east to west. Most of the scientists agree verbally, but they do not put it on paper. We have had delegations from US, from Australia recently visiting us in the last one year. They have also endorsed this, and we strongly advocate after seven years of study that north to south sowing can change. High density plantation, what, what Suresh Bhai was mentioning, is practiced in most of the high productivity cotton growing countries across the world, and that is the future. Mulching is another option that we can explore to um, you know, avoid evaporation and uh, reduce the weeds. So use of weedicides can be reduced. Regenerative agriculture, which Suresh Bhai was mentioning, is again here to soil, improve the soil and the carbon, which is very important. Carbon we need in the soil, not in the weather. And then shedding of cotton plants, that is the uh, use of byproducts of cotton. So I just wanted to share this one slide before I start the case study. Next. And all this is there in the Cotton Guru Pradarshan Khet or the evidence farm which we make in every project that we have either in organic cotton, in regenerative cotton or uh, conventional cotton. Urja is the uh, name of our new innovation that we are practicing right now, Biomass to Bioenergy, a project by Cotton Guru Maha FPO Federation. Uh, the, the description goes such that pellets, biochar, carbon. Uh, Credits, sorry, carbon credits from cotton stocks to improve livelihood and income of tribal women and smallholder farmers. These are two of our ta target audiences or uh, customers, you can say. One is the tribal woman and one is the tribal farmer. Problem statement and the solution. You can see from this problem statement that uh, 15,000 women, I am just giving this example of a small place in Maharashtra called Yavatmal. It's a 100% tribal district of Maharashtra and we have done this experiment so that I am not too macro on the things. We want to be start with micro and then then go macro, taken the data only from one district right now to 5 lakh hectares of cotton, 2 lakh 
cotton farmers, about 1 lakh tribal women staying in that area. Out of that, 15,000 women suffer health problem because of the stoves that they use. These are all high fumes giving stoves. The input is firewood. They, they go to the forest every day. It's a 100% forest area. They go to forest, they cut the wood, come back for 5 hours, 6 hours every week are lost in that. And of course, the fumes are very destructive for the health. That is the pain number one. The pain number two or the problem number two is the burning of the bio stock. That is the cotton residue. 50% of it is burnt or used to be burnt in, in, in Yavadmal when we started this research in 2022 and now we can say that we have been able to reduce partly but not fully of course and overall in India we say 30% of the cotton residue is burnt and 70% either it is unused or it is used for cattle field or not very productive or commun uh, commercially uh, remunerative purposes. So these are the two problems. You can see solutions. Pellet was one thing which was just mentioned briefly before. Pellet is conversion of this cotton stocks into a marketable, a storageable, a storable and a, a, a very commercially valuable um, byproduct. That is the pellet. It is it is made through machines, but it is the conversion of cotton stocks into uh, biofuel. That is the pellet. Second is the biochar. It is a biocompost. It is called the black gold. In the last 10 years, a lot of research has happened. There has been a biochar institute, a biochar journal, uh, an international biochar initiative on biochar. India is yet to catch up on that opportunity. So research and innovation comes into the picture here. How we can catch up on that trend faster and adapt to it. Social innovation. Study number one, tribal women empowerment. Here we see the cotton farm which most of you would know. Second is how these cotton stocks are then collected. Most of them used to be wasted but here in this experiment in these two villages uh, we have uh, uh, provided a shredder machine and then collected this uh, uh, cotton stocks that is the pallet manufacturing machine you see it costs only 10 lakh rupees and then they are converted into pallets and given to the um, uh, tribal women they used to use those mud stores and those chulas before and now they have these pellet stores with them. We have given some pellet stores to them and the carbon credits have been generated out of that. So one thing is the health problem that we are trying to solve here in this case study. Second is generation of some income. So the expense that they spent on the stores and the pellets is compensated in form of carbon credits for them. The case number, case study number two is smallholder uh, farmer yield and income increase. Again you see there is a cotton farm, the uh, cotton stock which used to be wasted which is called residue and which is collected now and there you see the in the picture on the right is the Contiki biochar kin. It is an arsenal biochar uh, system of uh, conversion of cotton stocks into biocompost. Here they are burnt but the fumes do not come out in the air. Normally you see black fumes you know emitting if you burn, burn wood. Here it is white fumes. It is a very special but very simplistic technology that is the con Contiki kin that we use here. We have got one machine right now in our Yavatmal and we plan to buy 10 more uh, for the project of course there, uh, there would be some support required for investment and this is converted into biochar which is similar to coal but a very rich uh, biocompost this is again enriched with uh, biocompost like uh, um, neem coated urea or cow urine which uh, which, which is mixed uh, with the biochar and uh, this charged up biochar is given back to the farmers they put that again back into the cotton farm and what we saw after one year of experience was 15% increase in yield, 10% saving of fertilizers. In spite that this was a water deficient year, rainfall was scarce in Yavatmal, they received only 62% of the normal rainfall this year. The yield did not compromise, the yield went up by 15% and additionally what we gave them is inclusion in a carbon credit program and they will be compensated starting from next year with the carbon credit. So cotton stocks which used to waste 100% and now are utilized 100% into a very rich uh, biocompost and a biofuel backed by uh, carbon credits. 
the whole cycle goes like this. We have an app, so starting with the app, everything is recorded on the app, and then that is, you see the cotton stalks, then two parts, one goes to the pallet for the woman, second goes to the biochar, corn um, kick in for the farmers, all of this uh, conclusively uh, converted into carbon credit, and you can see the income generated for the farmers. Business opportunity. Everything has to be in business. This is not a CSR activity we are looking at. So you can see this um, gas, even compared to LPG, it is 25 to 30 percent cheaper compared to the um, firewood fuel they were using. It is still cheaper. 90 percent reduction in cooking um, smoke that used to be generated. 15,000 women possibly to be impacted in Yavatmal. We have reached out to about 300 women right now, but we plan to do more. These are the um, SDGs that have been uh, addressed. The social development goal. Uh, that have been addressed. So 1,000 women uh, in Yavadmal we plan to cover in, by 2027 with our own fund, with some uh, help from other institutions and, and, and associations we can go higher. And similarly with the farmers you can see a lot of bio cotton stocks wasted, converted every ton of cotton stock that they give us cost them 1,000 rupees to cut per acre and we compensate that 1,000 rupees back to them. Apart from that, we give them biochar and still we are able to earn money. So you can see the potential there. What is the competition here? In this women program, right now there is no competition. In the smallholder farmers, of course, there are other people who are doing it and we appreciate their effort business plan and the go-to-market strategy is that tribal women, these are the numbers that we plan to reach in the next three years and and uh, the direction that we are taking right now is grow inclusively, grow within what we have right now and then uh, go out. So tribal women, smallholder farmers, industries, we have reached to some local dhabas and restaurants whom we have given the pallets. They have found a 30% reduction in cost of energy for them and they are uh, asking for more. That is why this pallet machine plan came up. It was not only for the women. 60% would be given to the tribal women. 40% would be sold commercially. And uh, for the uh, cotton uh, carbon credits, we have uh, approached over uh, five companies, three of them have sent their NDAs, two of them have sent their agreement, but there is a lot more to explore here and a lot more is possible. So executive summary being burning of wood for cooking and agricultural stock uh, in uh, farming is uh, a severe problem and a serious problem to the environment, to economic growth also of India. Pallet can be one good um, uh, option for uh, uh, biofuel. Biochar is a good option for uh, biocompost and carbon credits are the future for India if you look at additional income for Indian farmers, for industry and for the nation as a whole. If uh, this is the competition review, the other companies who are doing it and where we stand right now, you can see that using pallet as a biofuel has be, uh, proved to be a game changer for this uh, project. It is at a very, very nascent stage, but we are doing it physically, practically on the ground. That is why I am able to share this case study with you all. And, uh,